The Talented Mr. Ripley, written by Patricia Highsmith in 1955, is the basis for the Netflix series Ripley. Irish actor Andrew Scott plays the show's title character Tom. Stephen Zillian's screenplays deftly place us in the role of Tom Ripley, who is a monster, and in his thoughts to make matters worse. But the fact that eight hours with this weirdo is tolerable, occasionally interesting, and occasionally even pleasurable is a testimony to Zillian's writing and directing, as well as the genius of Highsmith's creation and Scott's performance. At the appropriately titled Narcissus, the eighth episode of the Ripley television series, Tom seeks a new beginning at an exquisite Venetian mansion. When Dickie's father, Marge, and Inspector Ravini pay him a visit, things become more complicated. Although it appears that he is surrounded, Tom Ripley is a cunning and intelligent man, or he is surrounded by idiots who could get away with two murders and a steal. John Malkovich, who portrayed Tom Ripley in the 2002 movie Ripley's Game, makes a brief appearance in the thrilling conclusion of the Netflix limited series. An artist kills a guy in Rome in 1606, and the episode begins with him going into hiding. He takes refuge at the Venice Palace, owned by his family. Tom is a man living the Venetian dream in the 1960s, hoping to live into the same manor house. He contracts a six-month lease under his true name, happy with the big residence. Inspector Ravini requests that his Palermo colleague look into the whereabouts of Richard Greenleaf, who did not show up for his scheduled interview in Rome. While Tom settles into his new house, Obviously, the man posing as Dickie fled to Venice, and poor Dickie is now at the bottom of the Mediterranean. At a press conference, Inspector Ravini accuses Richard Greenleaf of dodging the law. He designates Greenleaf as a suspect in the killing of Freddy and the possible killing of Tom Ripley. Tom visits a Venetian police station to declare himself found after finding out he is missing. When the lieutenant phones, Ravini chooses to go straight to Venice and have a face-to-face -face conversation with Tom, which complicates everything. Usually, Tom would have run away, but his passport is being held by the Venetian lieutenant until he speaks with Ravini. In order to keep Ravini from identifying him, he begins developing a cunning disguise. Remarkably, Tom's disguise succeeds, and Ravini doesn't recognize him. The two discuss Ravini's suspicion that Dickie killed Freddy, and even imply that there might have been a romantic motive. After the interview, Ravini assures Tom that the next day, he will have his passport back from the Venetian authorities. Before agreeing to be photographed by a reporter, Marge a trainee is reading in the newspapers about Tom's presence in Venice. Count Vittorio Araldi invites Tom to a party now that he's a mini-celebrity. Tom runs into Mr. Reeves, John Malkovich, a fellow vagrant at the party, and he gives him his business card. While Tom is settling into his idyllic new life in Venice, Marge gives him an unexpected call. She is en route to see him and is currently at the Venice train station. Marge appears astonished by the opulence of Tom's residence when she first visits him. We learn that after Tom has concluded speaking with the police, Mr. Greenleaf, who is currently in Italy, intends to pay him a visit. Tom attempts to clarify that his recent affluence is merely a bequest from his beloved elderly aunt. Marge appears cordial on the outside, but she still has her doubts about Tom. But she does welcome the opportunity to stay the night at the manor. Marge exploits the occasion to tell the guests about her new book deal with a New York-based publisher and persuades Tom to take her to an exclusive party to which he has been invited. Tom refuses to let her go early after a few drinks, but he gives in when she begs him to ride a gondola home. Tom is quite irritated to discover that the grand entry door is closed, and he has forgotten his key when the gondola drops them down. He leaves an inebriated Marge waiting next to the door and must climb over a fence to enter the house. He pretends for a moment that shoving Marge into the canal and saying her death was a tragic accident then opens the door from inside the home. Fortunately, he brushes the idea off fast. When Tom sees Mr. Greenleaf the next day, he seems almost ready to give up on ever seeing his kid. He doesn't appear to think Tom has done anything wrong and doesn't really care for Marge. In actuality, Mr. Greenleaf appreciates Mr. Ripley's help. Marge finds Dickie's valuable ring in Tom's bedroom while searching for his sewing equipment. Tom tells her that Dickie gave it to him so he could keep it secure. Marge seems to have finally connected the dots at first, but fortunately for her, she mistakenly believed Dickie gave Tom the ring because he intended to commit suicide. Mr. Greenleaf requests a meeting with Marge and Tom over the phone. Additionally, he has called in the private eye who located Tom in the first place in episode 1. Tom is initially afraid the PI is going to accuse him of killing both Dickie and Freddie when they are in the same room. Rather, the PI is interested in Tom's thoughts 
regarding his dearly deceased friend. Tom, seizing the chance, depicts Dickie as a wealthy but insecure young man who is having difficulties embracing his homosexuality. When they went to San Remo, Dickie allegedly professed his emotions for Tom. It's possible that Tom's rejection of Dickie's advances sent him on a path that led to his eventual suicide and the murder of Freddie. Following their insightful discussion with Tom, the private investigator shares his hypothesis with Marge and Mr. Greenleaf. He thinks Dickie left his hotel in Palermo, where the receptionist said that he looked depressed, took a ship to Tunis, but never made it there. This notion is further supported by a letter Dickie wrote to his landlady in Rome, in which she is given permission to sell all of his personal possessions that are still in the flat and implies that his paintings are worthless. The remainder of the letter sounds like a suicide note and strongly suggests Dickie's sense of remorse regarding Freddie's death. After being satisfied with the improbable tale, Mr. Greenleaf returns to the United States to comfort his grieving wife. He gives Tom the ring he once removed from Dickie's lifeless body before leaving. Thank you, Tom, for being such a great friend to Mr. Greenleaf's kid throughout his journey. In addition, Marge leaves Venice on a train, although she informs Tom that she intends to return to the United States. After getting away with everything, Tom meets Mr. Reed, a new acquaintance who has created a fake passport for him in Timothy Fanshawe's name. Tom sent Dickie's Picasso to himself by American Express under the identity. He could now take the grand prize because he was no longer covered with heat. Tom hangs the picture on the wall after returning home. After that, he takes a seat and muses over all that happened to bring him to this incredibly peaceful and joyful moment. When Ripley concludes, Inspector Ravini is seen checking his mail. Marge mailed a copy of her recently released picture book to him. A picture of the late Richard Dickey Greenleaf and a dedication to him are included on the opening page. At that point, Ravini realizes for sure that he has been tricked.